Hi, this is Chippy Neko here. Over winter, I watched Star Trek, the original series. Not just because it's a general interest, but due to the response that I was getting from my top 15 favorite episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. A lot of people want to know what my opinion was on other series, so I figured I'd go straight to the beginning. But I have to admit, the response I got from the Next Generation video kind of took me off guard. And, and, and really, you guys just gave such wonderful responses. This was a great list, Chippy Neko, with thoughtful commentary and good editing. We don't share all the same favorite episodes or the same order of favorites, but we still have a lot in common, which I think is a lesson that the next generation was proud to teach. Good luck on becoming the cat lady professor in the Victorian mansion. Fantastic video. I loved all the in-depth analysis and personal reasons slash explanations. This video truly justifies its length and I'm going to make sure I see all these episodes. Is that a woman or a man? Well, without further delay, this is my top 15 favorite episodes of Star Trek The Original Series. Number 15. By any other name from Season 2. While responding to a distress call to an unexplored planet, the landing crew are taken prisoner by an alien race called the Kelvins, who are from another galaxy called Andromeda. They were to find planets suitable for conquest in this galaxy. Since their own ship was destroyed, they needed the Enterprise to make the 300-year journey return home. The Kelvins have taken on a human form because the Enterprise is designed to sustain such forms, but it also makes them susceptible to human feelings and sensations. The crew is controlled by devices the Kelvins have on their belts, so a plan is devised to overwhelm the Kelvins' newfound emotions and weaknesses. If they all respond to stimulation of the senses, then maybe we can distract them. They can't have been able to handle the senses yet. If we can confuse them enough, we can get those devices from their belts. Exploiting certain traits of human behavior turns out to be quite simple. Scotty gets one drunk. Whiskey! Well, I will try it. I'll get it! <laughs> McCoy shoots up one with drugs. I'm gonna give you a shot. High potency vitamin concentrate. You'll need three a day for a few days. And the only weapon Kirk has is his power of seduction. Classy. Succeeding in retrieving the devices and reclaiming their ship, Kirk now points out that the Kelvins have become more human and are now too alien for their own planet and kind, making themselves a contamination. Understanding that it's now impossible to return home, the Kelvins agree to cooperate with Kirk and look for a new planet to call home, taking with them the new sense of friendship and compassion. Number 14. Balance of Terror from Season 1 Numerous things are introduced in this episode. The most prominent is the Romulans, an alien race in which the Federation were at war with, but has since established an Earth-Romulan war treaty a century earlier, creating a neutral zone due to the lack of visual communications during that time. When the Romulans are revealed, they have a surprisingly similar appearance to Vulcans, and this leads to some tensions on board. One crewman who had family killed by Romulans becomes suspicious of Spock based only on appearance. I was suggesting that Mr. Spock could probably translate it for you, sir. I assume you're complimenting Mr. Spock on his ability to decode. I'm not sure, sir. Well, here's one thing you can be sure of, Mr. Leave any bigotry in your quarters. There's no room for it on the bridge. It reminds us that no matter how far ahead we've come as a society, bigotry still seems to have found its way to keep going. Just because the issue has been minimized doesn't mean we still can't work hard to eliminate it entirely. It may seem impossible, but I would like to think that it can be done. Number 13. Doomsday Machine from Season 2. The Doomsday Machine is an episode that's pretty much Moby Dick in space. A massive machine attacks and destroys planets. A distress call from the USS Constellation reaches the Enterprise. The only survivor of the ship is Commanding Officer Commodore Decker, who was traumatized by the attack. What happened, Matt? 
Jim. Give him a minute, he's in a state of shock. The crew discover that the Planet Eater is the Doomsday Machine. Knowing that facing the machine is futile, they still theorize on how to stop it from reaching other solar systems. But in the meantime, Commodore Dector becomes so obsessed with vengeance that he attempts to take over the Enterprise to do it, placing the ship and everyone on board in danger. What we see is a struggle between rage and reason and the courage to admit to our faults and to do the right thing. The writing is top-notch, acting is powerful, and overall it's a great space-age twist to a classic story. The commander is responsible for the lives of his crew and for their deaths. Well, I should have died with mine. Number 12. The Naked Time from Season 1. Strictly a humor episode, The Naked Time was a direct inspiration for The Naked Now from The Next Generation, except it works better for the original Star Trek. The Enterprise is infected with a virus from another ship. The virus causes people to act in a drunk-like manner, but is also unfortunately fatal. The crew has to come up with a cure for the virus while managing the chaos on board. It's even worse to keep the order when you're also infected. While everything works out in the end, what we see is both goofy, silly, and even powerful. Nurse Chapel confesses her love for Spock. I'm in love with you, Mr. Spock. Spock has an emotional breakdown. <laughs> Sulu challenges everyone to a fencing match. And Lieutenant Riley locks himself in engineering and sings I'll Take You Home Again Kathleen repeatedly over the public address system. The roses all have left your cheeks. I've watched them fade away and die. Yes, it's odd, but hey. It's fun and suspenseful. The reasons why we love the original Star Trek. Number 11. Arena from Season 1. Kirk is invited to a dinner engagement with Commander Travers, a man renowned for his hospitality and friendship. But upon beaming down to the planet, the landing party finds the outpost nearly obliterated. A lone survivor is recovered and he tells them the outpost came under heavy attack bombarded by an unknown enemy. Kirk wishes to avenge the destroyed colony and chases down the aliens responsible, but is stopped by omnipotent beings known as Mertrons. They insist that the captains of both participate in a trial of combat on a nearby planet. Arena is the basic inspiration for the episode Darmok on The Next Generation. However, Kirk has to defeat his enemy with his resourcefulness. Arena is a classic episode in which we watch Kirk grow from anger to understanding, not to mention the cheesy costume and fight scenes. <laughs> what exactly did the director tell the guy in the costume to inspire him? Slower! No! More awkward! Yeah! Awkward! Yay! That is it. It's a definite classic Star Trek moment, but it still ends with Kirk learning an important lesson. No, I won't kill him. Do you hear? You'll have to get your entertainment someplace else. Number 10. What Little Girls Are Made Of from Season 1. When I hear other fans talk about their favorite episodes, I never hear of this one. And it's a shame, because I think it examines different aspects of the human existence. Dr. Roger Corby is Nurse Chapel's lost fiance who hasn't been heard from in years, but suddenly has been able to contact the Enterprise, so she and Captain Kirk beam down to search for Dr. Corby and investigate his research. What they discover is both amazing and disturbing. Not only has Dr. Corby perfected this construction of androids, but has duplicated his own memory into an android of his likeness revealing that the real Dr. Corby has been dead the entire time. Dr. Corby tries to convince Kirk on the benefits of an android body, the strength it provides along with no sickness, pain, and immortality. 
but by the end of the episode, we learned that such immortality comes with a great cost. By trading emotions and sensations, which is what makes us human to begin with. And by demonstrating such sensations to the android Andrea, she begins to yearn for humanity, and is seemingly ready to trade her immortality for humanity. Is this your perfect world? Your flawless beings killing off one another? Aren't you doing exactly what you hate most in humans, killing with no more concern than when you turn off a light? I'm not a computer. This episode tells us that we should never take our humanity for granted, and that the grass isn't always greener. Equate. Transmit. Number 9. The Trouble with Tribbles from Season 2. This episode has it all. Klingons, bar fights, and tribbles. Lots and lots of tribbles. Kirk and company receive a distress call from a deep space station. Finding out it was only intended for Kirk to guard a special type of grain until a dispute with the Klingons is resolved, Kirk gets angry but agrees to have a few of his men guard the grain once Starfleet's concern is expressed. The real fun starts when Lieutenant Uhura acquires a triple and brings it back to the Enterprise. And chaos ensues. <laughs> However, the little guys turn out to be heroes when it's discovered that the grain is poisoned. And if not for the Tribbles, many people couldn't have gotten hurt. When it comes to comedic episodes, The Trouble with Tribbles is definitely my favorite. They seem to be gorged. Number 8. Court Martial from Season 1. The Enterprise sustains severe damage from an ion storm and seeks repairs at Starbase 11. Soon after the Enterprise arrives, the Portmaster begins an investigation of the only reported casualty, the death of Lieutenant Commander Ben Finney. Reports show that Finney had been killed during a storm while his research pod was jettisoned from the ship. Kirk claims that the ejection of the pod was necessary to save the Enterprise. Stone refers to computer logs which show Kirk had ordered the pod ejected while the ship was at yellow alert indicating the ship was not yet considered to be in a serious danger. But Kirk maintains the ship was at red alert during the ejection of the pod, and so Kirk is put on trial for negligence. With the help of a lawyer, Kirk must prove his innocence by challenging the Enterprise's computer, which everyone believes to be flawless. Court Martial is a classic courthouse drama that encounters twists and reveals incredible scenarios that later proves the captain's innocence. It's some of Star Trek's best writing at work.